Welcome back to Sinking No Longer. This is week six. We left off where Abram met a mysterious person named Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a high priest and a king. We know that Christ also is our high priest and king. And Melchizedek blesses Abram, gives him bread and wine, and Abram gives him a tenth of his possessions. After this, we jump into Genesis chapter 15, and we see a very important covenant being made between God and Abram and his descendants. This covenant is so important, not just for the Israelites and the tribes of Israel who are to come, but for Gentile believers as well. Let's jump in and take a look at this covenant. After these things, the word of Yahweh came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. And Abram said, O Lord Yahweh, what will you give me as I go on being childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Since you have given no seed to me, behold, one born in my house is my heir. Then behold, the word of Yahweh came to him, saying, This one will not be your heir, but one who will come forth from your own body, he shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Now look toward the heavens and number the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your seed be. Then he believed in Yahweh, and he counted it to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am Yahweh who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess it. And he said, O Lord Yahweh, how may I know that I will possess it? So he said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, and a three-year-old female goat, and a three-year-old ram, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and split them into parts down the middle and laid each part opposite the other. But he did not split apart the birds. Then the birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, and Abram drove them away. Now it happened that when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And behold, terror and great darkness fell upon him. Then God said to Abram, Know for certain that your seed will be sojourners in a land that is not theirs, and they will be enslaved and mistreated four hundred years. But I will also judge the nation to whom they are enslaved, and afterward they will come out with many possessions. As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You will be buried at a good old age. Then in the fourth generation they will return here, for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet complete. Now it happened that the sun had set, and it was very dark, and behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a flaming torch, which passed between these pieces. On that day Yahweh cut a covenant with Abram, saying, To your seed I have given this land, from the river of Egypt as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. Genesis 17. Now it happened that when Abram was ninety-nine years old, Yahweh appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, so that I may confirm my covenant between me and you, and that I may multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God spoke with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you will be the father of a multitude of nations, and no longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. And I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings will go forth from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed and after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your seed after you. And I will give to you and to your seed after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. God said further to Abraham, Now as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your seed after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your seed after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. Genesis 17:15. Then God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her, and indeed I will give you a son by her. Then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Will a son be born to a man one hundred years old? And will Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a son? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. But God said, No, but Sarah your wife will bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his seed after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I will bless him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall become the father of twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you at this season next year. So he finished talking with him. And God went up from Abraham. Genesis 15, 6 tells us that Abraham believed God and believed his promises. 
and it was credited to him as righteousness. This type of belief is faith. He had faith, he believed, he trusted God. And so he is going to be the father of a multitude of nations. The good news that comes later is that when Christ comes for his lost sheep of Israel, he opens the door through his death and resurrection for the Gentiles, those without Jewish blood, to come in and be part of the family. What's interesting here is that we saw that Abraham had a high priest and king, Melchizedek. At this time, there was no priest or mediator between the altar and God. If you had a sacrifice to make, you went to the altar and you made it. But there also was no Mosaic law written about a Levitical priesthood and a mediator. And so we see this connection and righteousness was credited to him through faith, through belief. Now God tells Abraham that his descendants are going to go through 400 years of slavery, but that after that, he will deliver them. It's at that time another covenant is made, and there we see another change. We who are not of Jewish descent or faith are welcomed into the family of God by grace through faith. The Holy Spirit indwells within us, and we are directly in relationship with God. This mirrors Abraham's relationship with God. And though all were still waiting for that reconciliation and hoping in that salvation to be fully reconciled to God one day, Abraham's covenant and his relationship with God is very telling to what Christ is going to come to do.